Okay, here it is, my main bag. I use the Merit Mule Bag for my home birth gear. Um, and I've already done a video to show this bag, which has my pre-sip equipment. I've got my Doppler bag and mask and delivery instruments and sterile gloves and gel in there. And then on this side, I've already shown these two bags. One is a med kit and one is a neonatal recess kit. Um, so I'm just gonna show the main bag here today. So this top pocket, I keep just extra batteries. I'm always worried about running out of batteries for my Doppler thermometer or O2 sat monitor. Um, so extra batteries in there. And then this top part so that before I do anything else, I can put on my PPE. I've got mask, gown, uh, blue gloves, and sterile gloves. So those are all easy to access at the top. And then when I open up this bag, top pocket, I've got more sterile gloves and gel. And then this part, you can just keep buckled together so everything stays nicely in place. And then when you open it up, there are even more zippers there. I'll show those uh, in a minute. And even more zippers here. I don't keep anything in these. Um, so the main part of my bag, this comes with even more dividers, but I like mine organized this way. Off to the right, I have everything I need for a uh, catheter. So I have my catheter tray down in the bottom. I keep my Foley bag down to the side. I have my chlorohexidine here. I've got saline here for my Foley catheter. I have Foley catheters there and I have these little tiny in and outs that we get. And if I take you over to the other side, this kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, if you were to have a PPH, you need your catheter kit. Um, and in here, I've got an anaphylaxis and PPH kit just bundled together, the meds and my IV start. So as I mentioned, in my med kit, I do keep extra meds, I keep IV supplies and whatnot, but I also have um, just individual bundles in here ready to go. So this way it's really easy if I have anybody helping me, they can see the label, it's all together in here. So in the bottom portion of this little pencil case, I have bundled with a tourniquet, I've got um, uh, IV start, I have um, alcohol swab, gauze, tagaderm, a primary line, and a saline flush. It's all ready to go so I can start an IV quickly. I also underneath, I have another type of IV cannula here. Um, sometimes you're working with somebody that uses a different kind, so it's just kind of nice to have that one extra one there. Um, and I have what I need for uh, blood collection, so if we do have a PPH and we're heading in, we can collect the group and screen quickly. Um, and here I've got my extra oxytocin to throw in a bag. Um, and I've got my syringes so we can do extra oxytocin I am as well and then zippered in the top just so that it's not mixed with other meds or anything I've got my adult epinephrine so I have um, they come in glass ampules so I've got them wrapped in paper towel labeled epi very clear um, and a blunt fill needle a syringe and then another needle for administration so that's all together it just makes sense in my mind that if I have an emergency where I'm starting an IV those supplies are together ready to go clearly labeled and then right under where I keep that kit I've got my normal saline so I've got my one liter bag there and then I do keep extra um, in my car as well so big bag of saline emergency kits and then right next to that, I've got a bag of waterproof uh, or water birth gloves. So water birth gloves here. I also have a little timer. I usually just use a timer on my phone for time of birth. Um, but if, you know, I'm getting lots of pages or for whatever reason that doesn't make sense, I just carry this extra timer as well. It's just a kitchen timer, but it works really well and it's, it's backlit, so it's easy, easy to see. And then I also now carry a waterproof flashlight. Um, just that fear of dropping my phone into a shower or a birth pool. So I keep a waterproof flashlight on hand as well. And then in the middle, here's my heating pad to set up at my newborn recess station. This is completely machine washable. So I just um, obviously wipe down the wire and then this disconnects and goes in the washing machine. Um, and my O2 is just right underneath. 
So I have my O2 tank, my key, of course, and then my adult tubing and mask. So in my uh, neonatal recess bag is where I keep the tubing for my infant O2 use, but in my main bag is where I keep my O2 for the adult. So if, again, for me, it makes sense to have my emergency supplies all lined up here. I can um, administer oxygen, get an IV started, and do a catheter, and it's all right here together. And then above that, in this section, I've got my sharps container, and I've got my lap sponges right next to everything I need to suture. So I've got a headlamp. Every midwife needs a good headlamp to uh, suture at home. And in this bag are all of my suture materials and my extra needles and syringes. So this is such a great bag. It's just a pencil case, but the three pouches are so easy to organize and they all go really deep. So even this top zipper, the pocket actually goes to the bottom. So this is the most shallow pocket. So I keep my... Um, my suture material in here. I keep my 4-0. I love using that for um, labial splits or periurethral splits. Um, that's the most comfortable, I think, for people to have sutured with that. And then, of course, the 2-0 and 3-0. And then on my second zipper, I've got all of my syringes and needles. So that's for the adult and the baby, for administering medications, for infiltrating lidocaine. It's all there. And my top zipper actually fits my suture instruments as well as my lidocaine and I love it. So my suture instruments and then underneath I have lidocaine uh, gel and I carry 1% and 2% lidocaine in this pouch as well. So it's quite deep down that you can fit everything in there. So of course with my suture and needle and syringe bag and my headlamp, I also keep my sterile drapes if I need those to um, set up a good sterile field. So I've got surgical drapes there. And then just underneath, this is just where I also happen to keep my amni hook and um, my amniotic fluid indicators. So those are just kept underneath my suture material. I don't find I'm using either of those much at home, but they're there if I need them. And then just going to the outer pockets. So as I mentioned, I keep my suture bundle in here. I keep my uh, birth equipment bundle in my precip kit. And then I do carry a spare set of each and I keep those in this bag here, or this pocket here, sorry. So I have one extra set of uh, birth instruments, suture instruments, and I also keep my sponge forceps in there. And then in this side pouch, I keep extra blue pads. Of course, people are usually provided with those if they're planning home birth, but I keep some extras just in case. I keep an extra gown in case I need it. These were the gowns that were handmade and donated at the beginning of the pandemic by absolutely amazing community members. So, so thankful for that. I still use them. And then I also carry a mirror too, um, which of course can be uh, useful for people that want to use it or if you're doing a water birth. Um, so that's my kit. So I hope that that helped um, and now you've seen all the vet bags together. And I know there were new regs asking me to post these videos a couple of months ago so I'm sorry that it took me so long um, but hopefully uh, this is helpful even if you've already got your bags you can just see some of the different ways that people set up their equipment